Hello, uh, my name is Ahmed Tree, and I'm here today uh, to introduce you to a bunch of series in Node.js. So uh, I'm gonna have a full crash course on streams, a full crash course on uh, buffers, and a full crash course on the event loop and a bunch of others. Uh, um, I haven't thought of the full program yet, but I have planned the first three that I've talked to you about. Um, so let's get into it and we're gonna introduce more and more in a little bit so uh you know this is the node.js streams full crash course and basically the prerequisites is that you are familiar with javascript and typescript or at least javascript because typescript is a superset of javascript so if you understand uh, javascript you, you're probably good to go with uh, TypeScript. You're familiar with the basic concepts of Node.js because we are going to be exploring in detail uh, buffers, streams, and we're going to talk deeply about the event loop. So with that, let's talk a little bit about what exactly is a stream. So theoretically speaking, it's an abstract interface for working with streaming data in Node.js. What does that mean? So, you know, taking the uh, the examples we've cited here, like HTTP requests or standard output or standard input are examples of streams. And by the way, standard output is exactly, or, or you know, it's the thing that, that it gets displayed on your terminal when it's the output of your uh, Node.js program. Standard, standard input if, is if basically you're getting the input of a user in a terminal or, you know, a similar interface using Node.js. But this is actually kind of really important. There is a better and more connecting definition of streams. When you say, oh, I'm streaming a movie on Netflix, or you're streaming an audio, or you're basically in a call with someone. So basically a stream, it allows you to work with large sets of data or large data streams without getting the entire or downloading the entire data or putting it all in the memory and this is actually very important you know like when we talked here and said like the prerequisites that you're familiar with javascript typescript and the basic concept of node.js is there are so many people and again i completely understand that there's so many clever people these days who learn so fast but sometimes there are developers who are just you know um they're satisfied with knowing how to create a Node.js server, how to handle requests, and they have probably you you know if you uh, if this introduction applies to you, then you probably are familiar with uh, streams already because we talked uh, about like oh an example of a stream is the HTTP request or the response. So you've used it before. You've used it multiple times. If you've created a server. You know, just, you know, you were learning something and you created a server or you did it in a project. But uh, now we're going to understand it more. Why exactly are we using streams? What is the point of having streams? And are they that useful? And how can we use them? We're going to answer all these questions in this uh, crash course. And I know that crash course usually means that, uh, you know, the, the entire course is, uh, will be in the same video. But I'm going to break it into multiple videos just so you can skip or take breaks or you know if you know something you can skip it uh, or if you want something very specific you can go to it and you know uh, all streams are instances of the event emitter class and let's stop let me introduce a segment that i'm gonna carry on with the rest of the series uh, and it's called quick piece and quick piece is basically we're gonna stop for a minute and we're talk uh, we're gonna talk about a, a concept that you know you might be familiar with you might not be familiar with but i can't just say like oh it's it's an innocence of event emitter and just move on like oh yeah i didn't just say uh, a con a big concept that you need to be familiar with so let's just uh, say quickly that node.js is built around an an asynchronous idiomatic event driven architecture okay so and this is actually important if you're preparing for interviews because uh, you know, sometimes people people like to ask that question in Node.js interviews. They're like, "So, are the the basic interfaces in Node.js built, or 
there are instances of the event emitter class? And you might think like probably not, but they are most of them because you know Node.js is an event driven has an event driven architecture. So what 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 does that mean? So there are certain objects which we call emitters. They emit events that cause functions which we call listeners to be called and executed. So uh, really a really important note, and again, we're gonna explore this in detail in the event emitter crash course, okay? But, uh, you know, when I started with Node.js a really long time ago, like maybe eight or nine years ago, I wish I knew this, uh, and it was written in, a, and obviously it was written in the documentation, it's just like, you know, usually you get excited and you, you wanna start working on something without really fully grasping what you're doing. But anyway, so the, the point here is that the event emitter, when the event emitter emits, emits an object or emits an event, all listener functions are called synchronously. Yes, you can have multiple listeners to the same event because, you know, you don't want to spaghetti your logic and be like, oh, when this happens, well, just do everything. Like, oh, add to the database, remove from the log, do this and do that. Because, you know, uh, that's not, that's just not uh, maintainable. It's not scalable. Just like all the logic in just one listener that's just uh, dumb but anyway so any values returned by the listeners are ignored and therefore discarded so what are the main types of streams or actually all the types of streams there is a writable stream streams to which data can be written like the http response on the server it's really important to say on the server because you have a client you can't write on the response on the client readable well, okay, so streams to which or from which data can be read, like the request or the response, in this case, actually, the response in the case of the uh, client. So the client gets the response from the server and it reads it. Okay, so uh, we have something called a duplex stream. A, du a duplex stream is a stream that ha that is both readable and readable and writable. A transform is a special case of a duplex stream in which the output data is somehow related to the input data. With that, let me introduce you to a small example that uh, we're gonna delve into a lot more later, but the main purpose of this example is to illustrate why streams are important, even if you're not doing video or audio streaming. So let's get into it. So obviously I forgot to do this. Float on top, okay. So let's do this. Okay, so the, uh, I am working with uh, TypeScript, like I said in the beginning. I'm not going to introduce you to how to create a project. I'm not going to introduce you to how to import libraries. None of that. We're going to have a separate course on the basics of Node.js. We can go to that. Uh, and, okay, let's let's start. So this is written in ESX. So we're going to be like uh, import all uh, from, uh, sorry, as FS from FS. Okay, so we're gonna report everything from the FS library and let's actually get into the file. So first I'm gonna re write a huge file. Uh, I'm gonna try to aim for 800 megabytes, I don't know. Uh, maybe something more than that and I'll explain why in a second or when we get to it. And this is, this is going to be a, a writable stream. This is a, f a file writable stream and we're gonna say oh you know, I'm gonna write to uh, test.txt okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a basic loop you know, from zero to you know uh, no that's gonna crash the program let's say eight hopefully that doesn't crash it so uh, from zero to a one with eight zeros in front of it so pretty much a hundred million so okay right cool so here what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna say uh, file the write and we're gonna write uh, you know uh, whatever like, uh, whatever something something dark side urim epsom whatever just want to write a bunch of things and I want to create a new line and obviously if you've uh, had uh, you know, formal computer science training or, you know, a computer science degree, your professor might have always told you to close the file when you finish writing to it. And that's important. 
you have to go like, oh, file did end. Thank you so much. Cool. And let's test this out. I'm gonna say run start or npm start if you want to do that. And as you can see, the program is taking a little bit of time to write into the file because obviously I just said write 100 million lines. So you know you can't you can't really expect it to write it in a second. And as you can see, we ran out of heap memory, right? Okay, we did. It's uh, you know probably because I'm I'm recording and doing a bunch of stuff. So, okay, so JavaScript heap is out of memory. So I'm just gonna try to make it into seven. Might not work again, we're gonna try six, doesn't matter, that's not really the point. So 10 million lines, it worked this time because you know if the file got created here. We can open it, there's absolutely no point in opening it. As you can see, it's just a big file, okay? Who cares? Okay, so, okay. That's obviously not the point why I brought you here. I want to, I want you to compare the performance of reading a file without streams and reading it with streams. So let's just let me just get this out of the way. So if you read a file uh, like completely normally, what's gonna happen is that the file the file will get loaded into the memory, which is a disaster. You're gonna bring an 800 megabyte file into the memory and then you're gonna display it to the uh, user uh, in a terminal window or you know whatever uh, whatever have you. Uh, we're gonna do that and hopefully my computer does not crash. Uh, well it's, it's actually you know uh, it's the ARM MacBook, the M1, so hopefully we'll, we'll be able to handle it, we'll see. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a small server and like import everything as HTTP from HTTP. And we're gonna go here and let and say server equals HTTP to create server. I'm just, I don't care. And we're gonna uh, go here and say like, oh, on request, on any request, okay? And then we're gonna uh, give it uh, a, a listener function. So here, uh, so here, this is a, a, a really quick example of event listeners. And obviously, like we said, the buffers are already uh, an event, uh, an example of event of uh, a, an event listener. And as well, you know, HTTP uh, requests, and you know, this, the the HTTP object is basically just a an instance of the event listener. So the point, let's just delete this, and let's absolutely try to crash my memory why not and obviously i did not show you how big this file is it's probably not that big because you know we couldn't actually create a big file to reveal on finder and let's go here and say get info so it's 553 megabytes so well cool not big but you know big enough so um i'm gonna say like okay so uh, f is the treat and we're gonna give it the uh, the file, uh, you know, synchronously or asynchronous, uh, you know. So we're gonna go like, okay, so test.txt, okay. And then, actually, you know what, I don't have to say this. Uh, and we're gonna, uh, what's wrong? Okay, uh, expect it to, okay, cool, cool, who cares? String is not assignable to the type of number. Okay. Yeah, so read file, sorry. So, uh, you know, we can go error and data, okay? So what we're gonna do here is if error, throw error, otherwise just, you know, res that end data. Just send to us the response in data. So obviously, before we can use this, we have to say like server to listen, and we're gonna give it the port 80. Uh, you know, you can have it whatever port you need. Obviously, you don't need, you don't need me to tell you this. So I'm just gonna uh, open my other terminal window here, and I'm gonna, uh, yeah. Before I do that, uh, is the server running? It is. Uh, I'm using NodeMon to actually monitor the edits. So what I'm gonna do here is actually I'm gonna uh, try to curl on our server, okay, and uh, what I'm gonna do it, as you can see, it's reading the file, and you can't really see it, but we can actually uh, try to see, okay, so, you know, in a second, I'll, uh, so basically, 
what I'm trying to tell you is, is it's using a lot of memory because it's reading the file and the memory. And if it's a bigger file, it can crash the server. If we have multiple requests coming in, it's going to crash the server. And obviously you can talk about scalability, but like why would you scale a server that's built just, just built wrong, okay? So for that, let me just stop this because this is annoying. And uh, okay, let's actually read the file from a stream. What we're gonna do here is let's screw this. For let's start and say like let file and cfs uh, create read stream. Okay, okay. So I don't actually write this right. Create read stream, and we're gonna give it the file. It's test.txt. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say just it's really straightforward file dot pipe pipe in the response. So it's just gonna read the file bit by bit just loading the current segment of the file not bit by bit not literally as in comp the computer's uh, like not a bit that is that the byte is composed of i mean bit as in like uh, you know a chunk by chunk okay so that's actually a lot better to say and here if i do this and i curl as you can see it's reading the file a lot faster and also you know i can use the computer the computer is not really um it's not using a lot of resources the memory is fine everything is uh, is good and uh, so i'm gonna stop here be before i get too deep i'm not gonna read the 10 million lines who cares but this is pretty much uh, one of the use cases for streams let's get into the next videos and talk more about the types of streams how we can use them and how we can uh, utilize them for whatever use case we have in mind. Uh, thank you so much and see you.